Let's... Hello everybody, welcome to my video on Cobb Douglas Utility Maximizing. This is part two, where I expand from the two-dimensional version of Cobb Douglas Utility Maximizing that I did in my last video. And in this case, it's going to be n-dimensional. Now, I'm not actually going to solve for the Walrassian demand functions in n dimensions. What I am going to give you is a list of equations that will give you the solutions. Uh, I hope that will be useful to you. So anyway, I have a utility function, which is a function of some, a function of some vector of x's, which is x1, comma, x2, x3, x whatever, all the way up to xn. So the last video was a special case of this where n was equal to 2. Uh, this is more general. And we're going to say that the utility function is equal to the product from i equals 1 to n of xi times alpha i. Or sorry, xi to the alpha i. Uh, a couple of assumptions we're going to make about our alphas. I'm going to assume for the time being that all the alphas are greater than or equal to 0. Heck, I'll even say they're greater than 0. And I'm going to assume that this sum from i equals 1 to n of alpha i is less than or equal to 1. Now, these blue conditions assure us that our utility function will be concave. Uh, again, this is for mathematical simplicity. It allows us to know that we have an interior solution. And that calculus will save us. All right, let's do our budget constraint next. Our wealth would normally have to be greater than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of pi xi. But because of our blue condition, these combined tell us that it's going to be an interior solution, meaning this constraint will bind. So that is nice, because it means we don't have to check Kuhn-Tucker conditions for corner solutions. So let's build our Lagrangian. Lagrangian, let's see, our objective function is the utility function. Plus the, the Lagrange multiplier, w minus the sum of pi xi. There it is. That's the thing we got to maximize. Thank you, Blue, for making lambda be greater than 0. All right, so for our first order conditions, we take the respect, the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good i. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. That's part of maximizing, right? What's this going to look like? Alpha i x i to the alpha i minus 1 times the product of all k's not equal to i of x to the k to the alpha k, sorry, xk to the alpha k. Uh, e equals lambda pi. And so what have I done? I've separated this, and I've left the rest of the utility function unchanged. Uh, that's what we would expect to do in our calculus. Uh, I'm going to take it a little bit farther, though, because... I don't want to take this derivative n times. I want to make it as useful as possible. And so I'm going to pick dimension i and dimension j. And I'll just compare those and let them be everything. So I'm going to break this k up into two more parts. Where there's one part, that is xj to the alpha j times the product of k not equal to i or j, x to the k alpha k. So let me put the rest of my condition in here. So alpha i x i to the alpha minus 1. What does that even say? To the alpha i minus 1 and equals lambda pi. So all I've done here is I've broken this piece into two pieces so that I can keep my my xj separate from all these xks. And that should make sense here shortly. 
because now I'm going to take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good j and set that equal to zero. So let's see, that's alpha j, xi to the alpha i, xj to the alpha j minus 1 times the product for k not equal to i or j of x k to the alpha k equals lambda p j. All right, so what are these two equations telling us? We've got a first order condition for the jth dimension, and we've got a first order condition for the ith dimension. And these can be anything, uh, one, two, dot, 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 and as long as they're not equal to the same thing. So I'm going to follow the exact process as I did before, where I'm going to move these down so I can mess with them a bit. If you're writing this by hand, you'll just have to re rewrite the line. That's okay. And I'm going to take the ratio of these two equations. Everything on the left-hand side as a ratio. Everything on the right-hand side as a ratio. The lambdas cancel out. And we get, oh, and look at all this stuff. That whole product with all the K stuff, that all cancels out too, which is really nice because we can rewrite this function as alpha i x j over alpha j x i equals p i over p j. And this is true for all i not equal to j. So if we're optimizing, this equation will be true for every pair of goods. And so this coupled with our budget constraint to n of xi pi, these will give you what you need to build your solution. Uh, I didn't pick out a specific price vector or alpha vector, so I can't actually solve for it. Uh, but hey, this is good enough. I got you started, and if your teacher gave you something specific, then good luck. You've got enough equations to match your unknowns, and you'll be fine. So, I hope that was helpful for you. If not, well, too bad. Sorry to waste your time, but you wasted it anyway. Uh, yeah, in my next video, I'm going to talk about how to take these the demand functions from these and aggregate them into larger demand functions. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.